Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is the third Sunday in Easter. Hallmark is very confused. They could make a lot more money, but they just sell Easter cards for one day. The church celebrates Easter seven Sundays, 49 days to be exact. The 50th day is Pentecost, Penta for uh, 50 in, I think it's Greek, maybe it's Latin, maybe it's Greek. Anyway, Pentecost is 50th day, and that's when we celebrate, we'll be all in red, and we will celebrate when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and we celebrate the Holy Spirit came upon us, although Lutherans are pretty low-key about that, on our baptismal day. So during the season of Easter, we do focus on our baptism. When you come forward for Holy Communion, you don't have to, but if you would like, you can dip your hand in the font and make the sign of the cross, or a small one on your forehead, or you can just touch the water, as one member said last uh, service, I didn't want to make the sign of the cross, but I just touched the water. Is that okay? Yes, that is okay. Jesus is smiling the whole time. Um, so welcome to worship. Also, uh, we do have a member who asked, since this is Asian Pacific Islander Month, for our peace, we usually do this so we don't, we're not shaking a lot of hands, but if instead we could do this, Oh, people seem to really be able to know how to do it. Great. I uh, spoke to my friend from Hawaii yesterday, and I said, what does this exactly mean? And she said, aloha, but it's hard to explain. She said a gentleman cut her off on uh, the freeway, and he put his hand out and did this, and she said it was like an apology. I said, oh, okay, I thought you were going to say something else. She said, no, no, I knew he was apologizing when he did this. To be, to be calm, to be cool, all is well, aloha. So we will do that in honor of um, those who are of Asian and Pacific Islander descent for this month. Welcome to worship. I'm not sure who's supposed to give the announcements, so... Um, oh, oh, we have our... Madam President here, so, and I added one at the end, you'll see, yes, thank you, Lane. John, John. Okay, all right, good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, let me just announce that we have the Mother's Day pop-up sale in the Fellowship Hall. So thank you so much for our crafters who prepared all kinds of goodies that you could take for a mother in your life whom you know. Um, secondly, our annual meeting is coming up, uh, not next weekend, but the weekend after, Sunday, May 15th. So we will be celebrating Susie and Ed Salai that day. So um, come prepared to... Uh, celebrate them with us in between the two services. We're going to have a lovely reception for them. Originally, we were going to do a potluck, but we decided, no, we really want to encourage people to come in between the services to say goodbye to the Salais. So we're going to have that reception in between the services. We'll have the 1045 service, and then shortly after, we'll have some pizza available as a quick snack that you could grab, and we'll start our meeting at 1230. So... Sorry for the change, but we want to make sure that we're really honoring the Salais that day. So we'll start our annual meeting at 1230, and that will be here in the sanctuary, or you can also attend online on Zoom. Um, to prepare for that annual meeting, we're going to be having our second town hall. We had one this morning. We're going to have our next one on Zoom on Monday, May 9th at 7 p.m. So you're welcome to come and um, ask questions about the budget and give us your input. All right, second mile giving for this month is Mount Cross Outdoor Ministries. We're going to actually have the director of Mount Cross, who's going to be preaching here next Sunday on Mother's Day. So that'll be exciting to learn more about Mount Cross, and we'll be supporting them financially this month with, with our second mile giving. Please remember to fill out your attendance form and place it in the offering basket. 
you can read the Express for more details. And then John, I know you have an announcement about another good thing coming up next weekend. Hey, uh, John Champ, your uh, Elam Petaluma Boy Scout Troop Scoutmaster. <clears throat> and as you have supported our tri-tip fundraiser dinners so often in the past, we have a uh, pre-Mother's Day, uh, a Mother's Day Eve tri-tip sale. It'll be, um, pickups will be this Saturday between 12.30 and 2.30. And there, it, there is an announcement in the bulletin. There is a link. It's pre-sales only. And uh, let's see. Let's get some good stuff here. Let's see. Cowboy beans, bread, salad, dessert, and uh, a whole delicious uh, barbecue tri-tip. Uh, prices have gone up, of course, and so it's 75 bucks. Uh, but that is about what other people, or that is what other folks are charging. So thanks so much. Would you please stand for our Thanksgiving for baptism? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gates of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal and all-merciful God, 
with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Please read responsively Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Our second reading is from the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads, and thousands of thousands singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? The 
Holy Gospel for this third Sunday of Easter is found in the Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And as it is a little on the lengthy side, you may be seated. <laughs> Unless you want to stand. <laughs> After Jesus appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, he showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the, into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some so they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he jumped into this, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them, and though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grew old, when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fashion a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to Peter, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Children, please come forward for the children's message. Hi, Junie.
is everyone this morning? Well, when I was on vacation, I went to Chico, where I went to college. My friend, oh, yeah, is that where you want to go to college? <laughs> so my friend Jamie and I, oh, okay, we're carrying on an entirely another conversation. This is a great time in your life, Jimmy. You can do that. So when I was at Chico with my friend, we walked around campus, and we saw some students, and we told them, oh, we're graduates. And they were polite, but basically, they didn't care. <laughs> they just said, oh, and kept walking. <laughs> but we went into a fun gift shop, and I saw some puppets. And I saw one puppet, and he said, you need to take me to Elam Lutheran Church because I want to meet the children there. Yes. And my friend said, you need a name for your new puppet. And I said, well, you're right. What would be the name? We decided to name him Marty after Martin Luther. <laughs> roof, roof. Roof, roof. Do you like my new puppet? Yeah, roof, roof. Well, he doesn't talk, he just whispers to me. So, oh, okay. So Marty's been around a little bit. I guess he's been to other churches. He's wondering why we have the baptismal font, why we have the Paschal candle. You want to come look at it, Daphne and Junie? <laughs> so, we are looking and thinking and remembering our holy baptism. You can touch the water if you want. And when you come up for Holy Communion, you can make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Yeah, you can do that, just like that. That's what the pastor did. Actually, it was me. <laughs> when I baptized you, when you were a lot littler, when you were a baby, because you're not a baby anymore, right? You're a big girl. Well, Daphne, were you baptized here? Yeah. Yeah, so the pastor did that to you too. Made the sign of the cross on your forehead. And we do that when we come up for Holy Communion, if we want to. Do we all have to do that, Marty? No, only if we want to. And we remember our Holy Baptism, and then this candle is called the Paschal Candle. You can also call it the Jesus Candle, or the Christ Candle. And we always have it lit during the season of Easter. We also have it lit at baptisms and when we have memorial services because it reminds us that we have Jesus in our hearts every day, right, Marty? Yes, <laughs> actually, his namesake wrote a lot about that. You'll be studying a little bit of it in confirmation. And we also believe that at our baptism, we were given the gift of being with Jesus all the time after we die. Right now we're with Jesus all the time too, though. So we're not really sure what that's gonna look like. We just trust that Jesus will be with us. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the gift of our baptism. Thank you so much for being in our hearts and giving us the gift of eternal life. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Well, Before uh, we have our prayer, I want to say that it is so good to see Ray Gerges at the back of the church. Ray. And of course, also John, his son. <laughs> Ray was in the hospital for a while and then at home recovering and 
We are glad that you are in church with us, both of you. Let us pray. Fill us, Holy Spirit, once again with Easter joy from our resurrected Christ. Open our hearts and minds to the ways and places you continue to find us and lift us up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in our gospel for this morning, we run into the disciples who are no doubt filled with mixed emotions. They're not exactly laughing and dancing. They're not exactly singing Jesus Christ is risen today in the boat with in harmony on the Alleluia refrain. Let's step into the story, shall we? My guess is that as they're in that boat, there is mainly silence. They are in the Sea of Tiberias, which is really more of a lake. They have no idea that their quiet will be broken by Jesus. It's nighttime. We've heard the roll call of the disciples who are present. Simon Peter, Thomas, the disciple whom Jesus loved, which is John, who coincidentally is the author of the gospel, he always refers to John as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And even Nathaniel is there. We haven't heard from Nathaniel since the first chapter of John. So it's almost like there was a great English teacher in John, the gospel writer's life, because he's bringing Nathaniel back almost as a way to bookend this story to alert the reader it's almost over. Then there are the sons of Zebedee, and there are two disciples who are not named. We don't all get named in the Bible. So they're all there in the boat. Jesus is gone, and their world has been turned upside down. We can imagine that Peter's heart may still be reeling a bit after his denying Jesus three times and hearing the cock crow. So what does Peter propose to do? He doesn't really invite them. He basically just makes a statement. I'm going fishing. Well, I'd like to step out of the story at this point. Let's imagine you're in pain. You're in grief. Some of you don't really need to imagine that. You may be in denial about something in the language of 12th step recovery. You might be future tripping. You might be going down rabbit holes. You're creating scenarios which are all catastrophic. And of course, your stress level with this denial, with this grief, with this pain is really high. If I were a Baptist preacher, I would say at this point, can I get a witness? And you all would say either amen or oh yeah or mm-hmm. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Your world is turned upside down with this pain. You want to run away. So you say something like, I'm going fishing. I wasn't completely aware at the time everything that was going on in the house. When you're a child, you're not. But I do remember my dad. If we three kids were playing kind of too loud, he was a quiet Norwegian from Iowa. And if we were just going a little too crazy in the house, my dad would look at my mother and say, Shirley, I'm going for a ride. And then we would all get quiet because we would feel like we were kind of the reason he needed the ride. And then we'd hear his Harley start up. We'd sit there, as soon as he got out of the driveway, go back to being kids again and making all that noise. Some of you say, I'm going gardening. And that's where you find your peace, putting your hands in that good soil out in your yard. I tell Thomas, 
as I'm hooking Sophia up to her leash, I'm going for a hike. I need to walk through this problem. Whatever you do to go fishing, you've probably done it. And you probably understand what Peter is going through. The disciples, they're eager to accept, escape their pain, maybe even settle into a boat on the Sea of Tiberias and settle in with a little denial. Nope, everything's just fine. Here I am, fishing with the boys, like I always do. So they hop into the boat with Peter. They work all night. They catch nothing. Nothing is gained from their toil. By the way, if you know John at all, you know that he loves to play with the metaphors of light and darkness. Jesus calling us the light of the world, calling himself the light of the world. And when there is darkness, we know it is a metaphor for pain, for fear. Then the light dawns. And what do the disciples see? On the shore, they, they see a man. They don't realize who it is yet. Well, we're the hearers. We're the audience. And it's just like when Mary was at the tomb, remember? And she turned around and saw Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. And we just want to yell. We want to yell, hey, Mayor, it's Jesus. Can't you notice? Well, same thing. Come on, guys. Can't you tell that it's Jesus who's calling you to take your nets and put them from one side of the boat to the other? Now, I am not a fisher person. I fished once and in a beautiful, beautiful lake in Wisconsin, and we heard loons, and I thought it was really lovely and excruciatingly boring, especially when the friend I was with said, Kath, you can't talk the whole time. You'll scare the fish. We have to be quiet when we're on this boat? It was lovely. But those fishermen took their nets and put it on the other side. Now, they are not on a cruise liner. They are on a boat. You know, they're going to put it on the other side of their boat, and the fish are going to be like, hmm, same net, same young men fishing. We're not, gonna, we're not stupid. We're not going into that, right? But what happens? John's great with the details. 153 fish. Now, Jesus doesn't say bring them all. He just wants you to bring a couple to the shore. And then there's that lovely detail of Peter being naked on the boat. And some of us are like, that's how they fished? But anyway, back to the story. He runs out because the disciple whom Jesus loved, interestingly enough, John kind of gets top billing in this gospel. He tells the guys, it's the Lord. So Peter's excited, goes on to the beach, and how many of you have had fish on a fire when you're camping or backpacking after the fish has just been caught? Yeah, it's really good. Even if you forgot all your seasonings at home, it's just very delicious. Jesus said, Come on, guys, let's have breakfast together. Jesus tells them to get out of the boat and come to the shore and bring what they have. Now, some of the disciples, rightly so, because this is their uh, way of making a living, put those 153 fish and they do drag them to the shore. And we're told another detail, which is part of the miracle. The net doesn't break. These guys were not just fishermen. They were also sewers. Because at night they would sew their broken nets. But these fish didn't tear the nets. So they all finally come to the shore. 
Christ invites them to come into his presence, his life-giving presence. So we just had a town hall meeting. It was a good meeting because people shared honestly with each other. We talked about our plans for ministry for the future, which over the centuries, church councils and leadership teams have called budgets. We talked about our budget. Our leadership team has worked so hard on this budget. Andrea worked very hard on this budget with the assistance up there of Kevin. Lane sent a ton of emails. Lane, thank you for all your emails. <laughs> Where do you find time to write all those emails? But Lane is getting it all organized for us and we're all responding or she's leading a meeting and we're responding. And then there's talk with the president and the treasurer. A lot of time was put into this and thank you for that but we are talking about how we are going to step into the future as Elam Lutheran Church together. And we have some financial challenges, let me say. But trust this. Jesus has called all of us into this wild adventure that we call ministry here at Elam Lutheran. We will all come to the table and bring what we have. And then Jesus will do what Jesus always does. Jesus will put a blessing on it. This Easter tide, let us remember that it is the very heart of our Christian faith to relish and rejoice in the staggering promises of resurrection. We are called to live into that promise in our daily lives. Can I hear an alleluia? Alleluia. Let us remember that even now, Jesus stands on the shore with his arms outstretched, calling to us, come on, let's have breakfast together. Let's eat this holy meal together, which we will do in moments. Let's see what I can do with everything that you bring forward. C.S. Lewis wrote a book called Mere Christianity. And here's a paragraph from it. They met Jesus again after they had seen him killed. And then after they had formed into a little society or community, they found God inside of themselves as well directing them, making them able to do things they weren't able to do before. End of quote. Sisters and brothers, God is with us. In a little while, you will come forward to partake of the body and blood of Christ. And when you come forward, bring what you have. Bring your whole self and meet Christ and then trust that all will be well. Amen.
them show and I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Please stand as we affirm our faith. We believe in a God who can astound us, a God who created the mountains of California, the stars on a summer night, and the green of Ireland. We believe in Jesus, whose example changes us, an example of love for those on the fringes, healing for the sick, and welcome for the lonely. We believe that Jesus was abandoned by his friends, wounded, mocked, and killed by the state. And in a garden, three days later, we believe that life began again. The stone was rolled back as death lost its sting. Ever since that day, we believe the Spirit has been inviting us into an expansive life, a life not measured by wealth or accolades, but a life full to the brim with joy, overflowing with laughter, saturated in hope, and decorated with good news. Death has lost its sting. We believe and are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you send your apostles, Philip and James, to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially Don, Renata, Christina, Ray, Robin, Dave, Nancy, Sue, Jean, Bob, Tom, Jim, Amy, Irene, Diane, Richard, those battling COVID, and those we name silently and aloud. Strengthen and encourage the people of Ukraine during this time of war and fear. Turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, bless all those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and celebrations of all kinds this week. Fill our hearts with love and acceptance. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for you to put a blessing upon the people of Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Santa Rosa. As Pastor Tyler Jensen is installed today, may they celebrate with him and his new wife 
and may they enjoy their time of ministry with him and may it be fruitful for that city and county. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. Let us pray together the offering prayer. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Would you stand, please? The peace of Christ be with you always. And share God's peace with your sisters and brothers in Christ. Be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And if you are at home worshiping with us, you may take your bread, the body of Christ, given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me and those at home, the blood of Christ shed for you.
For as often with this bread and cup we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Richard is our usher, and he will direct you forward. Here at Elam Lutheran Church, all are welcome to receive Holy Communion. Seek not the food that will pass away. 
of God and believe in the truth you have heard. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup. Turn in with every breath. Praise the one in whom you are reborn. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
likeness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save.